That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Kern High Network. I say welcome back because we've been at it for a few weeks now. The 2023 season is upon us. My name is Vance Palm. I have Rich Cornford here and Julian Wilson. What a very special night. This is live exclusive coverage of the Kern High Network as they cover high school activities throughout Kern County. Tonight, the activity is athletics, and the specific athletic event is a very, very special one. In 100 plus years it's been over a century that these schools have been playing football in kern county and we've checked our sources it's been discussed all week some people didn't believe it it's the truth the never has, has shafter first. high school played against bakersfield high school truly an instant classic before the ball is even kicked up so many storylines tonight we'll cover them all but let me bring in my partner, long time, very successful coach here and a highly thought after voice of football and competition, Rich Cornford. Rarely, rarely in a high school community anywhere do you go 100 years without two very prominent programs with very prominent names and alumni hall of fame figures and they haven't played each other yet we do hear that in the early 30s 1934 35 we were all there the early 30s the d teams played for the generals and the drillers but never the varsity teams between bhs and shafter i've spoken with both coaches so have you we'll get to those storylines i'd like to hear from your thought as a former player in this central section of California, as a coach who's coached some high-level names here, and now as a broadcaster, how crazy is this? It is crazy. It's so crazy. When I found out about it, I pleaded with Stan Green to get this game because, you know, that driller mystique 
is always alive. And this is probably the first time Shafter gets to deal with that. And how their kids handle that is going to be interesting. You know, Shafter is a team that played for a state championship at a lower level last year. They got a ton of guys coming back. They only have 30 guys on their roster. They're going to have enough steam come the fourth quarter to hang with these drillers. And, you know, drillers struggled last week with, with Frontier, but their name still is the drillers, and we're playing at this historic stadium tonight. So great matchup. It's interesting you would say that because as I was down on the field, I was trying to talk to as many people as I could, and I ran into another driller legend and he's in the driller hall of fame he's in the elias hall of fame he's in the bakersville college we're going to get to the hall of fame jeremy stott and he was looking over at the shafter game he comes up to you and i and he goes i can't believe they've never played he said it's true so his words were looking at the shafter generals so this is their season tonight then spoken like a true driller <laughs> you know for a lot of schools in town when they play the drillers it is their season because they are tough to beat Shafter won the toss, they deferred, so they will start on defense. The mustard colored pants, white tops, drillers, all blue. We're underway on the Kern High Networks. Exclusive coverage of this great game, and he took the ball into the end zone, comes back out with it, and what a start. Boy, good decision there to bring that ball out. I thought they were going to call that a touchback. Looked like the ball might have crossed the plane, but the referee was right on it there. Good return for the drillers. Good starting field position. First and 10, drillers at the 32-yard line. Crowd's still filing in. It's going to be a big night here. Shafter always travels well and come down 99, about 20 miles, 18 miles, whatever it is, and they get set to watch their generals take on the big blue of Bakersfield High School. It's going to be a fun night no matter what happens. And I had great conversations with the coaches. I'm sure you did too. And we look forward to hearing those. But let's get down to the football game. First and 10 from their own 32-yard line. Shotgun. Toss over to the left side. Great catch. Some yards after the catch. Really, really nice. The quarterback for the drillers Smith is Daniel Reyes. I think that was Robert Smith that oh, actually Robert got the Smith. start tonight. Oh, Smith gets the start. on the reception. He's the young gun slinger. They're going to play him both, but I uh, was anxious to see who they put in. Number 15, Robert Smith, Got it. thrown for 103 the yards this year. Uh, just, a, just a sophomore. Both these quarterbacks sophomores. Shocker's quarterback, three. Ezekiel, started last year as a freshman for him. Second and four, 39-yard line. Nice pickup on their first down. They're going to stay on the ground. And very close to the first down. He'll be a yard or two short. And spoke with uh, Coach Perucci. He said they're a run-dominant team. The drillers are. Yeah, they're going to try and run that power down your throat. And when you have a, you know, a coach that played in the NFL as a running back, you probably think that's probably going to be their identity. Third and short here by formation. Shafter has an opportunity here to make a statement, and they do. Big play right there by Alex Aguirre. Aguirre and a host of generals makes the stop. Fourth down. Great job playing downhill there by Aguirre. Spelled A-G-U-I-R-R-E. Having grown up in Arvin, I know a lot of Aguirre's. Spell with the exact same spelling. Could be Aguirre. Could be a Gary. We're going to go with Alex. What a beautiful night. I think this is also, as September 1st, the precipice of decent weather coming down the pipeline. How about this? They're going to go for it. And they're going to get the first down and more. Look out. It's Abbott down the near side. What a run. Well, Abbott's been averaging 8.8 .8 yards a carry so far this year, and he just extended on that with that nice job. That's the old school ISO play. You don't see it run very much anymore with everybody in the shotgun, but fullback leads on a linebacker. Great job by Abbott of bouncing that one outside. Not only a huge first down, but puts him at the 30 yard line. First and 10 at the 30. So, one of the strengths that Shafter has is up front. They've got some pretty serious size. And watching how the drillers can uh, deal with that is going to be one of the critical factors in tonight's game. High snap, goes up high to get it, and that 
threw off the timing of the entire play as we see Wells. You know, he had to wait a millisecond to get the ball handed to him, and that's all it takes with that speedy defense. Yeah, allows those guys to, to flow, beat the block a little bit better. Second and long here. Going against a slight breeze here. Long enough, much enough of a breeze, I wouldn't want to punt into it. Um, or kick field goals into it. Now, if we look over to the left, to the north, we see the train coming in. And that optic is easy to see. The wind blowing to the northwest, coming out of the southeast. Second and 11. Quick toss out here to the near side. Again, they put it in Richard's hands. Richard, yards after the catch, already impressive here in this first drive. And I think that's something the drillers are going to try to do is get the ball out to their playmakers in space. The, uh, the, the, the success we've seen has been a ball that bounced outside and a couple short throws to the outside. High completion percentage plays there. Third down and Helps three. Robert Smith, the, the young quarterback, settle in, but he throws a very nice ball. Third and three. We're just underway. First quarter in a football game for the ages. A millennia has passed, <laughs> and these two have never played. Wow. Again, short toss out to Abbott. Can Abbott cut it up? He can. Oh, that's a nice play. He gets to the 15-yard line, and it's going to be first and 10. Good call by Coach Sheehy there. In the red zone now for the drillers. Again, so far this season, Shafter is 2-0, oh, hasn't really been tested. Um, two pretty easy wins. Well, the, the drillers had to fight it out with Rigetti. Uh, well, won that one in game one, and then, like we said earlier, struggled with Frontier last week. But a good start for the drillers. I'll tell you about my conversation with Coach Sheehy a little bit later on about that defeat last week to the Titans of Frontier. It was a big one, but he has a perspective on it. A deep pitch with a lot of runway to get started, but it didn't matter. Wells gets gobbled up over there, and that was a really, really nice job of pursuit. Marion Sloan there came in from his free safety position there to get him at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there by the sophomore. That's something I think we'll be saying a lot. Great job by the sophomore, the junior. Both of these teams very, very young. Valdellarama on the stop for the generals. And an equipment substitution initiated by the official. Austin asked to come off. Richards comes on. Second and ten, seven and a half to go in this first quarter. Smith. Again, fires one out to the left. Oh, a good nab out there by VZ. But how about the Shafter D not letting him go anywhere? He's still on his feet. Bruce VZ on the reception. Finally, the whistle blows. Picks up maybe a yard. Escobedo. I think that was the ball Robert Smith Jones. would like to have back. Put it in a little bit better Third position. We talked nine. about earlier on in that zone play with the timing being off. You know, just threw the timing off on that. The Shafter corner was able to get off his block and at least hold him up till the Calvary came to finish him off there. So third and long here for the drillers. And I'm not sure what their kicking situation is like, because for a coach that really dictates a lot in this position, because if you don't have somebody that you feel like can make it uh, from here, then you're calling two, you know, kind of two plays at once here, or thinking two plays at once. He's got some blocking out on the right side. Can he get to the edge? Shafter does a nice job of shutting it down, and he goes down at the 10-yard line, so it'll be fourth, and looks like about six. Looks like the field goal unit's coming on. Going to be a 27-yard kick from the right hash. Fourth down. Now, I was watching the Shafter kicker while I was speaking with Coach Perucci, and there was no problems there. for the Generals. Yeah, Shafter special teams, I know, are definitely special. They've already returned two kickoffs this year for touchdowns. And they haven't, I think they've only had four or five returns, opportunities. Makai Dallas 
28-yarder, high snap. This is up, and that wind is blowing. Did he get it through there? No, it's wide left. It, the wind, it was a burst of wind literally at the snap. <laughs> oh, man. What a tough break. Yeah, the first break goes the way of the generals in this one. Covered a lot of ground. Did a good job of getting a lot of different plays and a lot of different looks. And Julian, our director, producer, cameraman, when you get a chance, no rush, but when you get a chance, we'll show the wind. It's pretty pronounced. Well, this is my first chance to see Ezekiel Osborne, easy as they call him in Shafter, uh, run the show. Again, started last year as a true freshman. I guess that's all they have in, in high school. Sophomore now and has just grown into the system, the 4R system. Ezekiel Osborne hands the ball off, and the first play from the line of scrimmage is an exciting one for the Generals. They get nine yards. Wow. And the Shafter team is a lot more than just Ezekiel. They, Coach Perucci loves his offensive line. Uh, instead of calling them pancakes, they call them surfs. And he's got the Shafter Surf Company over there. They print T-shirts and everything about these guys. Of course. Get to the ball quickly. They hand it off quickly. And that's a nice job right there. Great open field tackle. Uh, that's a beauty right there by Julian Grego. You can hear that wind blowing <laughs> through our microphones. You can see that if you're at the game, you can see the flag blowing big time. That flag is really whipping on the north side of the football field. Maybe a storyline as we go. Already one missed field goal. You know, I just noticed Bakersfield huddled up defensively while Shafter did not huddle up offensively, and I wonder if Perucci will take advantage of that later on. Slings it. Oh, what a nice pass. pass. It was intended out there for Sloan. Sophomore to sophomore. Pass was for Sloan, brings up fourth down for the Generals. So the Generals look, look to be punting here, Bruce something DC they haven't done a whole lot this Jones. season. Back to receive. Rogers. So a quick three and out for Shafter, but they're not shy. That's certainly three, obvious. DC. Yeah, great first down play by the generals. But then we saw Mr. Consistency himself, number 11 there for the, the, the drillers. Uh, Julian Grego make a great stop for a loss of yardage. Really critical on that drive. Big crowd rolling in and they're still coming in. And Shafter, like I said, hadn't punted much and the gunner on this left side doesn't realize that on fourth down, you usually, you usually punt. That gives us a chance to catch our breath and reset. Great to have everybody with you tonight, with us tonight. I'm Vance, he's Rich, there's Julian. Julian, when you get a chance, let's show that flag. It is blowing. We're at a timeout here with 4.34 in this first quarter. No score. Drillers were the first to touch the football, and they got all the way down to the 10-yard line. Couldn't get it in, but did a nice job getting it down there. And then Shafter took over and quickly has put themselves in a three and out. High snap, manageable. And this bounce is going to drop right into the hands of Rogers. Rogers looking for some room. Definitely has some room. Has the blocking look. Rogers cuts back up field. He makes one more cut. Rogers to the 20. Ladies and gentlemen, how about this? A touchdown. A yellow flag at the 50 yard line, but Harvey Rogers. Took a big one hopper off of the grass that landed right in his hands, and that just gave the drillers a perfect opportunity to set up the wall. However, it looks as though it's going to come back. Yellow laundry on the 49 yard line. And it is a block, illegal block in the back, holding one of the two. Drillers. Well, that's a big break there for uh, the generals because it looked like BHS had something big going. Shifty Harvey Rogers uh, got a little space, and boy, nobody really had a decent shot of getting him down once he was in space. That's a, a week two, week three mistake. Mm. Week nine doesn't happen because they, they know. <laughs> so there's the call. It happened at the 39-yard line. Actually happened at the 50. So... 
a scare goes into the general crowd. And the driller crowd, they got the boo birds out. They didn't like it. They said, we struck first. We deserve that. Robert Smith still in a quarterback. I don't know if they're going to rotate him by quarter, by series, or what. But he's taken the first two series, at least, here tonight. But the plan was to rotate between him and Ryan Iniguez. Takes a hit late. No flag. And it's caught. What, what a catch. He took a big, big hit. Robert Smith did. He was laid out by the big fella. And the big fella landed right on him. There is a flag at the 42-yard line. But what a snag. What a catch. Was that Reyes that made that Ooh, catch? No. Well, I'm, I'm not sure who made the catch, but the flag is on the drillers. Uh, well, Isaiah Richards made the catch. Make the, I thought it was number seven, and it is. It's Richards. But Robert Smith just... I don't even know if Shafter realizes it yet. Got drilled by one of the big fellows. I saw it coming. That's what I was watching. Maybe, oh, maybe he pointed the wrong direction. So Smith huh. took a big hit, and it was legal, and is actually right in, right in his face. Like, he, he saw it coming. It wasn't from behind. He saw it come, and he released the pass, and it was a beautiful pass. Illegal helmet contact. And so uh, the ill. That, I don't think that's what that was. I think maybe they got him for a lineman downfield because we're talking five yards there. Let's see if they get it straightened out. Well, a much, much bigger story is Robert Smith going down. What we'll do is we'll catch our first real breath and take a break, and we'll be back. Great game, great start, a little bit of consternation now on the field at BHS. We'll be back right after this on the Kern High Network. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. Well, Robert Smith is up. Looks like he's favoring that left side. And the student body was yelling out his first name, BHS student body, Robert, Robert. So he took a really big, big hit. A lot of times you think they get the wind knocked out of them, and then when the big guy that hit him landed on him, thought maybe it just suffocated him for a second, but he looked like he's favoring that left side. So if you're just getting with us, 357 remaining here in this first quarter. No score yet. Shafter and BHS, first time ever in the history of these two very old, storied, historic schools have ever played each other. Special hello to Scott Winkler watching in tonight. Wink, I know you wouldn't miss a game like this. Never. It's too big, too important. Fourth, sorry, first and long. Looking for some room out there is... 
Bryson Abbott, the ball. Abbott. And he gets about well, seven, but it was first two. and 15. Another chance where the initial hole was plugged, but a good bounce by the driller running back to, to pick up a seven yards on that and make it second and manageable here. So quarterbacking now is Ryan Inigo. We talked about him earlier. He is the savvy veteran. He's a senior this year. Completed 66% of his throws this year and already has a touchdown pass. So positive for the drillers is they've got some experience here at the quarterback position. Whistles blow, but it's a false start. Drillers uh, march it back. So a little bit of discombobulation here for the drillers with the quarterback going down, a couple of penalties. Second down and 12. Three minutes to go, first quarter. Second and 12, ball at their own 37-yard line. They stay on the ground again. Oh, a nice, nice play right in the middle of the football field. And it looks like another beauty, but there's a flag again on the field. And if this is against the drillers, boy, you're going to have about 2,000 people here with some big, big boos. Chop block. Oh. Wow, that's three big calls already. Uh, and again, not to say it wasn't a good call. But so uh, you've got a, a, a kickoff return call back. Then you have a long pass play, a completion call back. And now you have a 50-yard jaunt down the middle of the football field call back. So and we're in the first quarter. <laughs> right. I mean, we're talking over 200 yards right. of offense or in special teams called back here that they would have gained. So Coach Sheehy and his staff also having to kind of deal with it. They're making all the right calls. They're doing what they should be doing, and they're having it negated. Second and really long, 22 yards. Screens and draws in this situation is what you often see. And Iguez rolls to his right, pump fakes. Then he launches it over here to the near side, and look out! Almost took a cheerleader out. Incompleted pass intended. Launches receiver. it is the right word to describe that, that throw. Good job Austin. by him. Nobody open. Third down, Don't take a sack. Get rid of the ball. So storyline so far is that the drillers have dominated ball possession big time, and they've covered a lot of ground. Whether it's been called back or not, they've covered it. And their starting quarterback, Robert Smith, has been knocked out of the game. So third and 26, they say. I thought it was 22. It's 26. Higher than I can count. Iniguez behind center. They pitch it out here to the near side. Good looking blocking down there. And that's going to be Wells that gets it down to manageable. Manageable. Now, one of the things when you do have a roster of only 30 guys, a lot of guys going both ways, is you try to find some special teams kids that can come in and fill for those guys so they get some kind of a breather. We've already seen when Shafter punted the ball to BHS, that kind of bit him in the butt. And uh, anxious to just see right now what kind of return they can set up because these drillers have the luxury of putting a lot of guys in the ball game. Punting against the wind for sure. It's coming right out of the southeast. Decent snap. Here comes the punt. You can see the wind just gobbles it up. It's pushing it almost backwards. Bounces at the 49-yard line and goes back to the 47. So dealing with the wind here as we're about to descend into some perfect September weather. I think I saw midweek it's going to be like, or Tuesday it's going to be like 84 degrees, Coach. Am I going to see you on the golf course? <laughs> if you're hiding out in the bunkers, you might. <laughs> Okay, Generals, second possession. Their first one was quick. Exciting, but quick. With 1.36 to go in the first quarter, they've got a ton of wind. The wind is behind them. 
you throw it up there and just let it blow into the end zone. They throw across the middle. Oh, what a nice play. Great defensive effort out there by Rodgers. Harvey Rodgers on the coverage. Yeah, and when you talk about the shaft of passing game, it's, it's legit. But when you talk about defensive backs in a place with a history of great defensive backs, I mean, not going to find a better spot than the drillers. And Jason Oliver, who was a former head coach here for a couple years, one of the best DB coaches around, is, is coaching defense for the drillers. Flag on the play right in the middle of it and it's the umpire that says all start on the general. spoke with coach Sheehy about Jason Oliver Five yard penalty, second down he was talking about his coaching staff and he was running down the list and he says and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention J.O. is with me so I went over and talked to him for a while and I said hey your head coach said that I can speak to you he <laughs> laughed and cracked up and we talked for a long time but we he said, hey, long, long way away from Centennial Park playing hoop, didn't he? I said, yeah. I said, oh, yeah. He and I used to play some serious hoop with Mark Miniweather. And we had a nice chat about things. And Rich, he said that Coach Nixon at Liberty, of course, gave him his blessing. There was nothing, anything negative about the move whatsoever. He, he said, if I get asked, I want to go help him. And Coach Nixon said, of course, I understand you do. And he said, Vance, that machine over there, Liberty, <laughs> is rolling with or without me. And here I get an opportunity to help and be a part of growth here. And, and it was just a great chance to catch up with one, one of my favorite people on, on the planet, Jason Oliver. A couple of mistakes here by the generals. And boy, they're calling it tight here, that's for sure. I'm just amazed that a Husky can work with a Trojan like that. <laughs> well. I think they're reminiscent and nostalgic now that the Pac-12 is, is oh, blown up. So they're, they're so they're trying to uh, at least bring back some of those old memories. How about this? Coach Perucci right now has got his palms to the sky saying, guys, we haven't even gotten to the line of scrimmage yet, and flags are coming out. What's happening? Yeah, and this really goes to the heart of what Shafter wants to do is use that big offensive line and test the driller middle, not be one-dimensional. Well, all of a sudden now, you've got Osborne first and forever, or second and forever. Throws it out there. Nice catch. Big hit, but no wrap-up. And right back to the original line of scrimmage that they started this whole thing with. The ball came out, but he was down. It was caught out there by Sloan. On the reception. Now, we talked earlier about that shaft or passing attack, the four R's. That stands for rhythm, read, rush, and release. Uh, the, each one is for a different route. The release is actually tells the quarterback if the first three ain't there, run it. But it's a system that Perucci's implemented. Came from a coach from Oklahoma and uh, been very, very successful. He's had some of the best quarterbacks in town. Great run. Big, big play. How about this? What a big tackle. A nice one. And Davis Olsen with the sack, and that sends us into a short break. And we'll be back with the second quarter here on the Current High Network. No score yet at Griffith Field. Start of the second quarter, Vance Palm, Rich Cornford, Julian Wilson. We're all here witnessing an historic football game between two very old schools in Kern County that have never played each other at the varsity level. This is pretty cool. Fourth and very long for the Generals. Again, now they're punting into the wind. And the ball bounces, and everybody clears out. It'll be first and 10 from their own 39-yard line. Well, Coach, your thoughts on that first quarter, the first 12 minutes? Well, it's really hard to say because neither team could get really any momentum with the flags. And some of them were 
physical fouls, but a lot of them were just mental fouls. And we saw first and 25 on this side and third and 26 on that side. And you just don't have any plays on your play call sheet for those situations. That's the voice of Rich Cornford, longtime coach Ball here. Different high schools with happen. different stars. Game and game one of his stars, on Deron Mackey's picked up two Second wins now at Stockdale High School. We'll talk about that as the evening unfolds. I don't want any Driller fans tonight watching going, come on, come on, get off West High. Well, pretty impressive. We'll see. First and 10. Again, change in quarterback oh, for the Drillers. Abbott has some room out there. Very physical play at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> well, it's funny that you just mentioned Mackey because uh, number eight for the Drillers is Drahir Mackey, and he just leveled a shot for General there, lead blocking the on that play. He's been out. Uh, he's a 500-pound squad guy. He's got college offers, but uh, this is his first game back after going through some uh, a surgery. So, uh, boy, judging Second by that down. play, he's back. So there's some synergy when we and talk about Mackey. Right. Well, in that name, you know, whether it be West High or the Drillers, uh, the Mackey name has got some clout to it. Second and six. Offset running backs. They stay on the ground. This time it's going to be Abbott. Abbott gets stopped and then breaks out to the right side. Abbott still on his feet. Abbott, another great move. Wow, and finally gets shoved out of bounds at about the 35, 36-yard line. Man, this junior is tough to catch. Well, you know, he reminds me of Barry Sanders. Yeah. When you see, you know, it, the hole is not there, and he finds a way to bounce and, and collect large chunks of yards outside the system. Uh, a luxury to have. And, uh, you know, that makes it very tough to defend because as a, as a general, you got to slow your, your flow down a little bit because you're afraid of him bouncing. Timeout on the field. Bakersfield High School Drillers. Again, welcome, everybody. We're in the second quarter on the Kern High Network. Pleasure to have you all with us. Last night, Rick Van Horn and I were over at Golden Valley. What a great game we called last night. It was a really nice welcome game. Golden Valley started off feeling good after a rough, rough week the previous week. And didn't even get to play the game. There was an accident, and they had the game canceled. So some players were banged up. Nobody too serious in the, uh, in the player roster, but it was an emotional night. And they came out with that emotion and that fire. But the South High Spartans, they hung in there. And it was 21-20 late, late in the game. But Golden Valley able to pull that out. Really, really nice football game between the Bulldogs and the Rebels. Second and six after the timeout. Actually, it should be sec first and ten. I, I need to stop looking at the, uh, the scoreboard because... <laughs> That may be electronically challenged over there. First and 10. Niguez. They try to run between the tackles there and pick up three. Abbott takes a drive up the middle. Shocker defensively has been solid at the point of, of attack but has struggled on those those bounce out plays. So look for the drillers to do something out wide here. Some way, shape, or form. Three yards on the carry, second down and seven. Drillers up front, led by Rogelio Garcia, number 55, uh, 4.0 GPA. The little engine that could just gets after you. Kalik Austin out here blocking on the wing next to us trying to free up some space Mackey, the for the powerful Mackey, but a nice, nice job by that general defense. Two yard gain. And that's jersey number five, Hector Cruz. You always have to love the athletic departments that choose white numbers on white jerseys. Got to love it. Got to love it. I got to think it's difficult on them, too, when they're breaking down film. <laughs> well, I think they, oh, yeah, for the opposing team, sure. Uh, yeah, that's very smart play there, Coach Perucci. Very smart. JP's assistants Adam Clayton, Zach Clayton, AC George, Roder Patterson, Derek Kirschman, Jaden Perucci, Leo Mino, Nathan DeJager, and Fortino Valdivia. Great coaching staff there for the visiting generals. Third and six. And they're going to have to burn another timeout. Coach Sheehy and one of his assistants instantly saw that it was not set up correctly, and they have burned all their timeouts. 
in this first half. It's over. They're over, and it's 9-16 left. So if they get any kind of time management late in this first half to try to score, they have no timeouts to work with. Coaching staff for Coach Sheehy at Bakersfield High School, Noah Hawley, David Bivens, Gordon Copper, Patrick Horn, Robert Huntsman, Matthew Montiero, the aforementioned J.O., Jason Oliver, and Adrian Pennywell. We want to thank everyone at Bakersfield High School for hosting us tonight. Special thank you to Stan Green and all of the Kern High School District superintendents and our sponsors at Valley Strong Credit Union for allowing us to put on events like this for our community. We'll thank the administration of BHS here in a few minutes. Third down and all right, six. third and six now. Iniguez, play action, has a man, finds him. He's got room, picks up the first down. Great job out there by Grego. And it's a first down, BHS. Boy, great job faking the ball inside and hitting the receiver out in the flat. Just enough yards for the first down there for the drillers. And, uh, you know, this is the second time the drillers have been down here. Last time they had the wind in their uh, face a little bit. Now they got it behind you. But either way, kicking's going to be tough with as hard as it's blowing. PA announcer said Olsen, but it was Grigo, Julian Grigo, number 11. First and 10, a pitch over here to Abbott. Abbott cuts up, finds a gap. Abbott's gone. Touchdown, Drillers. No flags anywhere. First score goes to the Drillers. And again, once again, we see ball tossed to the left. Great vision by uh, Bryce Abbott. Cuts back against the grain. Got through the line of scrimmage, and nobody's going to touch him. Well, he was out of there. So first real big play the drillers have had that hadn't got called back. The junior running back made one cut, and I could see it from here. He still had, oh, the PAT's blocked flag at the very end of it as well. So the kick is blocked, and then at the very end of the play, over on the goal line, one of the officials tossed a yellow flag down. The umpire position, so it makes me think they might have boloed the center. Need to have your attention, mm, not allowed to hit that guy when his head is down. Street, the tow truck is out there. They're getting ready to tow you. If you're parked on California, you better rush over and move your car. The tow truck is out. Glad I didn't park on California. Well, there's about 60 cars that did, so <laughs> that cat's going to make a lot of bread tonight. Half the distance to the goal. The drillers are going to kick again. You were right, coach. They get another opportunity here. Now they need to adjust their tee a yard and a half forward. They adjusted it about half a yard. It's Makai Dallas. He's had one attempt at a field goal, but he was kicking into the teeth of the wind. So now it will be a 19-yard PAT chip shot. Nice snap. Good hold with the wind, and it is good. So the drillers on the board first, seven nothing. Coaching staff found a few things, saw what they liked, and then they just put it in the hand of their talented running back, and, and off he went. Well, in high school football, running backs are worth their weight in gold. Coach Perucci out there having a vociferous discussion with a couple of his linebackers and DBs. They were kind of hoping that after the touchdown and the, the PAT and the penalty, that little time had died down, and maybe Coach had forgotten. <laughs> Coach no, Bruce, you don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> He's the nicest guy in the world, but boy, he is he is intense. He's one of the rare coaches that is my height. So when when I'm talking to him, we're eye to eye, and boy, he looks over and he gives me an answer about something. I can imagine being a, a freshman, sophomore, high school, a little kid looking up at that guy. What a mountain of a man. And then conversing on the other side of the football, you've got Rashad G. He's probably the most genteel, kindest human being you'll ever meet, but a total assassin on the football field and basketball court. Seven nothing, drillers up. And a little eight iron could cause problems. Balls on the ground, balls on the ground, fumble! Ooh, so a somewhat. The north side of the street of California being parked. The ball was kicked, 
fumbled and recovered. Somewhat of a laissez-faire attitude towards that bouncing ball. And, ooh, boy, that almost cost him. Mentioned earlier, they've returned five kicks this year, two of them for touchdowns. And that's why the drillers did that pooch kick. For two perfection. Boy, you really don't want that ball touching the, you're to the ground told. if you're the generals because you just don't know how it's going to bounce. That one almost bit him in the butt. And as a side note, if you didn't know it, if your car's parked, parked on the north side of California and it's getting towed right now, goodness. All right, eight and a half to go in the half. Generals want to put something together here offensively. They haven't been able to really get a flow going, coach. Yeah, That's with their, the their no huddle carrier. offense, they don't use a ton of tempo. But they like to be on time and call plays from the line of scrimmage. But I think another, another flag here. Holding on play. So tight game being called tonight by these officials. Some big, big guys up there in the trenches. And I asked Coach Perucci what he felt the difference Holding is going to be in this game. He goes, Vance, I hate to sound so cliche, but it's going to be right in the trenches. It's going to be O-line, D-line. And can we do what we need to do? And can we stop what they're trying to do? He said, sorry for the cliche, but really, truly, that's that's what it's like. Felt like they needed to impose their will. And when your line average is 6'2", 275, you can impose your will on a lot of people. But the drillers aren't your typical team. They go to the air. They toss it. And, oh, what a fantastic snag that was. And they've got a first down and more. That right there was a big time play, goes into the wind. The ball was kind of floating out there. And Marion Sloan goes up there. And that was a really, really big time catch and an important catch. Great catch. Great throw by Ezekiel Osborne. I didn't think anybody was open, but you know he comes in this game having thrown 549 yards and nine touchdowns in his first two games. Wow. So he knows what he's doing with the ball in his hand. And now the big fella. Up the middle, gets a first down, 10 yards on that carry. And here we go. This is what Shafter wants. They get a couple first downs, roll with the tempo a little bit. Start getting a feel of what's doing, what, what you can work with. Espinoza with that carry. Playing way off this low receiver down here. Again, a huge hit laid on. <laughs> the PA announcer gave it the old, oh my, Chris Espinoza. Yeah, Espinoza, the, the old philosophy, always be the hammer, never the nail. I guess so, Coach. And, you know, it looks like Coach Perucci only has eight seniors on his team. Yeah, they're, they're really young, Joe. They had four freshmen play for them last year. I think they've got eight, nine, or ten sophomores right now uh, this year. Under seven to go in the half. Osborne wants to throw. Unsuccessful. And completed. Second down. Now, in case you're wondering, Osborne is already six foot two. So you talk about a guy who's going to have, in his high school career, some crazy numbers. Uh, having played 16 games as a freshman all the way to the state finals. Um, you know, and he's been through the trial. He's a sophomore, but here's a guy that threw five interceptions in the game against the number one seed, but came back to lead two touchdown drives in the final two minutes to win it. And Coach, he's 6'3", 6'4", in cleats. As a sophomore, you got to expect a little more height to come. Second and ten. They stay on the ground. This time it's Vasquez. Vasquez, a really nice piece of running there, and they can't bring him down. They just have to shove him out. Another first down. And I Vasquez would say, the ball carrier. But, you know, on this drive, when the generals have been in front of the chains, their offensive line well, is dominating bounds, up front. Up Saw another. Coach Perucci clapping his hands and congratulating one of the linemen and pointing at him and saying, yeah, you, I'm clapping for you. Great job. Well, I, I, the guy probably surfed somebody. Like I said, the <laughs> Shafter Surf Company. Those five guys up front. Well, the big fella is Jeff Vanderpool, 6'7", 265, as we mentioned earlier. That's a big old boy right there. You can see him standing on the left side. He is one big dude. A toss inside. It is complete to Jesus Figueroa. Ball is caught by Figueroa. 
They've also got Parker Balderrama, 6'2", 315. Matt Cardoza, 5'11", 235. Wynn Flores, 5'11", 240. And Ethan uh, is 6'305", their center. So that is some beef up front. We're sneaking up on the six-minute mark left here in the first half. 7-0, BHS with a lone touchdown. But we've all had the feeling and the inkling that Shafter could strike when they were ready to. They've just stubbed their own toe a few times. Across his body, he throws, and it is caught. What a great, great play there. And Harvey Rogers is telling the official, hey, he pushed off on me. That's why he was so wide open. It was really actually a great acrobatic catch after he turned around. Rogers defending. So Sloan putting his name on this drive. First and goal, hurry up offense. And Maddox Demontrade having to run in there and wow, what a job. The whistle blows and oh, was ouch. there a penalty? Yeah, they got shafter for illegal, illegal procedure. procedure generals. Well, the last thing you want when you got first and goal at the one, and that's how many illegal procedure calls? I'd Three say or four six. now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a lot for this early on. They're calling it tight. I would have liked it when the official, you know, kind of warned the kid a little bit. Well, that was a great effort by Maddox Dumatrade. He had to run on the field to get in position because the player that was supposed to be in there had an issue with his helmet. So nice job, Maddox. A roll to the right. Osborne looks, floats one up into the end zone dangerously. That thing hung up there for a second. Good job stringing that out by the drillers. Again, we see Julian Grego on this side of the ball. Plays both ways, but they call him Mr. Consistency. Second He's just one of those goal. kids that knows how to play the game, is always in the right spot at the right time. 5.29. It's second and goal from the seven yard line. It was down to the one or two yard line. And a penalty and a did I hear whistles? I do. Goodness. Again. And Coach wow. Perucci, I'm not sure who he's angry at, the officials or his quarterback. But, boy, that's a false start. On the generals. Well, the drillers looked like they were bringing the house that time, and that might have made a lineman flinch in there. So this really throws you off, because second and six, you're thinking, hey, they could run, they could throw. Second and 11 down here, you might be going right into the driller's st strength. They've got Espinoza, the power back, and he's on the right hip of Osborne. Will they try to chew up some yards? No, it's play action. They throw it, and a great, great play there by Harvey Rogers. Oh, oh the flag comes out. And the coaching staff for the drillers just can't believe it. They're beside themselves. They thought it was an absolutely textbook beautiful play by Harvey Rogers. And I'd say his hand was on the receiver's back, but I don't think he impeded the receiver at all as he worked, went after the football. So, again, they are calling things very tight tonight oh, on both sides. Oh, man. So we've seen a lot of yellow in this first half. Five oh six remaining in this first half. A lot of disjointed clock stoppage here in the last five plays. So now it gets back to second and goal from the five. And the drillers have just been sending everybody. Now they do give it to the big fella. Oh, and he's hammered. And the ball popped out actually. And that was Mackey again. So Trahir Mackey goes up with Chris Espinoza. Espinoza's 5'7", 220. Mackey, just as big, just as strong. Two great athletes. That is, that's like Earl Campbell and Mike Singletary colliding at the five-yard line. Boom. Yeah, and, and Mackey won that battle. Well, he's pumped up, and they're going to go have a seat in front of their video screen. That's a big hit. And we know Duran's watching tonight somewhere. Yeah, he's got the night off after right. the big he win over Ridgeview last night. He's probably here. He's probably here. Knowing that you're calling it, he's got his headphones <laughs> and he's got his earbuds in. 
So I can learn from Coach Cornford anytime. Oh, uh, yeah, that kid. He's, I can learn from him. Okay. The drillers get possession. They lob one up here. It's blowing in the wind, and is it caught? It's incomplete. Well, I think they've got a matchup they like there. Um, size and speed wise, it looks like a, a pretty good advantage for Isaiah Richards. They kind of just threw it up, didn't they? Yeah, 6'2, 160 pounds. They go get it. Johnny Escobedo, the corner there, is 5'7. They, they saw it, they liked it, they called it. The ball's a little wobbly. So second and 10, they've got 95 yards to go to get a touchdown with 4.45 remaining. This time they're going to run it. He's looking for a gap. Can he find it? Again, that's Abbott, and Shafter shuts it down. Little counter play there by the drillers. The Again, Shafter's been dynamite at the point of attack all night, and that time they prevented him from, from bouncing back. No gain on the play, third down. College football starting up in earnest this weekend. A couple of big ones tomorrow. And Friday Night Lights setting the stage all across the country. Most wonderful time of the year. It's that time of year. I think I've heard that like around Christmas, but I'm sure it means football. Four minutes exactly. Oh, oh the fumble goes into the end zone. Trouble, 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 trouble. And that's a high snap safety. High snap down in the end zone safety wow. for the generals. And just like that, the generals are on the board and they're gonna get the ball back with 354 left in the half after they just had a pretty impressive drive. So they didn't have to wait long to get it back and they're chomping at the bit, coach. Boy, I tell you, as good as both of these teams are, it's going to come down to who can do the simple things better. You know, just who can line up without jumping off sides? Who can snap the ball to their quarterback? It's those things right now that have been the difference in this game. More than more than the explosive plays. All right, so last time we saw the BHS pooch kick it. And Shafter was slow to get to that ball, let it hit the ground and almost lost it. I'm sure they'll overplay a little bit to the left-hand side here. Shafter missing one guy on their kickoff return right now. And here he comes. He makes an entrance. He wants to make an entrance. Okay, here we go. Off the safety. It'll be an orthodox kick off the tee. It'll be a nice opportunity for the generals taken at the 30 yard line. So let's see what happens here. And the speedy, shifty running Ball was taken at the 31 up to the 47 the yard line. Oh, that's a nice job out there. And I believe that's JJ Vasquez, and it is. Nice job. Yeah, we haven't seen Vasquez run the ball a whole lot yet, but he's averaging 10 and a half yards per carry in the first two games of the year. So I'm anxious to see if he gets a few more touches. That was a good job of absorbing a pretty good shot, picking up a few more yards. Okay, can the Generals get in the end zone with 344 remaining in this first half? Osborne, quick shot out here to the near side. Figueroa looking to cut up field. And he's brought down right in front of another Figueroa. Figueroa on the reception. <laughs> Simmons on the stop for the drillers, not before he picks up big yardage. Well, they're giving him a huge generals. cushion out there, and the generals are happy to take it anytime they do that. Now, Mackey is not currently in the game the defensively, so if I'm Coach Perucci, uh, I'm much more likely to run the ball than I would if, if big old Mackey got back in there. Play action to Espinoza. Osborne rolls to his left, delivers. Oh, oh and it's dropped. Boy, got another great throw on the run. Right on the Get mark to the Sloan, and Sloan, Sloan is a dependable guy. So 
So we're looking at 315. So the clock really is no concern for the chapter on this drive. And Coach Perucci's well, got his two timeouts if he needs them. Yeah. The drill. So they can they can go into their entire playbook. It's probably four down territory when you're at the plus 40 here. They're coming. They come after him, and they're able to withstand the power legs of Espinoza. They were blitzing heavy. And I think that's the driller's response to uh, to Shafter running the ball so well inside on them is just to blitz those backers. And I know that uh, Mackey is back in the game. Third down and eight. It's a who's who tonight. I was talking with Steve Walford and Mark Hudson, and boy, those are some names. Whoop. And he got him. And he got him with a hard count, actual contact. And Yvonne Garcia Encroachment. gave the center a little love tap. But if you're Wenceslo Flores and you're 5'11", 240, he did his part to play the role and go backwards and get the easy yellow. Two and a half to go here. Third and four. Osborne looks to his left the entire time. Floats it up. Anybody can get it. And it was underthrown, and Wells almost got it. Excellent covered by JL Wells. Coach Ferrucci does call the offense. He's walking Intended down the sideline with Beard and the big old call sheet over there. What has he got? on fourth and three here. Fourth down I, I think I'd hard generals. count them once again. They've been, Driller's been blitzing fourth consistently, time and snap counts. Worth a shot, you got those timeouts you can burn if, if you need to. That's the voice and mind of Rich Cornford. Makes my job very, very easy. I call the names and numbers and he actually gives us clear thoughts. Espinoza now on the left side. Can the big fella get those yards by himself? I don't think so. Hey, hey, hey. And yes. it's another stop. And guess who's right in the middle of all of it again? Jahir Mackey. And a great job adjusting by Coach Oliver and his defense over there, finding something that Shafter was giving him trouble. I had just mentioned how the Shafter offensive line was dominating the drillers. He made an adjustment here, and since that point, the drillers have been dominating the Shafter Surf Company. Our director producer tonight is Julian Wilson. For those of for those fans of Julian Wilson, yes, it's beanie time. It's September. It's officially beanie time. Even though he showed up here and it was still 99 degrees. So the drillers bolt out of the sideline huddle right up to the line of scrimmage. Iniguez right behind center. And they go to the ground, and it is not successful. Nice big tackle there by Parker Valderrama. Boy, and Shafter is answering the call. I mean, this is old school football. Powers, counters, isos. And at the point of attack, Shafter's been dynamite. That play run at... Uh, Daniel Rodriguez, number 19, took on that fullback, stuffed him at the line. You know, he works out at the, the Grindhouse, which is where my son works as a, as a trainer over there. So, you know, he's been putting the hours in. 90 seconds remains in this first half. Second and 13. A trap. And it's Harvey Rogers. And the quick-footed Rogers... Harvey does Rogers not get out of bounds, so the clock still continuing to grind away here in this first half. The score is seven to two. The Drillers with the only touchdown, and then the bad snap. Now, if I'm Perucci, I'm thinking I might want to use one of my timeouts in this situation because I've got a pretty explosive offense. But he, he's going to let the Drillers let it go down and make sure he gets the stop first, makes it fourth down. Third down and about seven. Number one touchdown. I'd be surprised if the drillers threw it here. Pitch, and it's over to Abbott. Abbott, can he get up to that first down marker? He cuts back. He does not. And now Coach Perucci looking Abbott for a timeout. Carrier. Oh, he didn't call. I thought he gave it the old uh, no, timeout call. Yeah, there it he is. Just, he just did. I think they didn't see it the first he, time. They didn't because he let him know, hey, I'm trying to call a timeout. So 
He gets the timeout with 33.7 seconds. Generals. Never know. Never know. The, the key here is this punt return. If you let the wind blow the ball another extra 10 yards, then you're not really going to run anything. But if you can catch this ball in the air and get a few yards off of it, then you can take a couple shots. And we've already seen a regulation bad snap. You know, you know, could could always get a bad snap here. The wind. Played a little bit of a role already. Missed field goal attempt early in the first yeah, quarter. To thank some of the sponsors of the Bakersfield High School program, Appreciation Insurance and Financial Services. Where will we be That's next week? The Law Office. Go to your phone, go to your laptop. You'll see at Kern High Network. They ask the community, what do you want to see? They give you the opportunity. Tell us what you want to watch. You can weigh in. And then they send Rich and I and Kenny Calvin and Van Horn, Robert Chavez. High snap again. They back him up. This time, no pressure by the generals, but it probably could be a decent wobbler. And it is. It goes out pretty much at the 31-yard line. So 68 yards to the goal line. Yeah, and with, boy, yeah, with that wind, I think I'd it. be a little cautious if I'm Coach Brucci. Yeah. But I'm not Coach Brucci. He's a much better coach than I am. And uh, we'll, I'm anxious to see what he does here because, uh, you know, you look at his track record when he was at BCHS, they went to state. To He's taken the Shafter program to the highest levels you can. Um, and just an amazing job what he's done. And again, he guy knows he's an offensive lineman, but he knows how to coach quarterbacks, man. I'll bet you a red vine licorice that they go down on a knee. Okay, I'll take that bet since they're in a the shotgun right now. <laughs> you didn't wait long to call me on that. <laughs> red vine, here I come. <laughs> you got my red vines. Okay, Osborne, you're going to be careful with it. Look out. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's Wells. Can Wells make something happen with it? And he goes out of bounds with 14.8 seconds left. So they give the ball right back. All right, so now we'll switch over. If I'm Coach Sheehy, I'm definitely going deep, and I'm going to go for Isaiah Richard exactly. with that six-foot-two frame. And if, if I can isolate him in any way, one-on-one -on, -one on any of the Shafter DBs, that's that's what I'm doing. If I'm Shafter, I'm playing my safeties very deep. And it's a quick sideline timeout. Oh, not a timeout. It's a six. six it's a quick sideline huddle. Yeah, because the drillers are out of timeout. Right. We talked about them using them all earlier. They don't have any timeouts, so as quick as they could, they said, get over here, let's go offense. They probably didn't think they were going to get the ball, but they got it. And so now there looks to be some confusion, and they're looking for Davis Olson. They better hurry. All right, now I think I've got enough room down here. I am chucking it up to Isaiah Richard if I am the drillers. Oh, he got an outside They let it fly. Up. He's got an opportunity. And he catches it! No way! Touchdown, Drillers! Oh my goodness! Now, the, the whole key to that play was Isaiah Richard took an outside release on that corner, which made it impossible for the safety to get over there on time. As a corner, you've got to funnel that guy into your safety to, so that you can get that help. So great release. Four or five speed is, I mean, tough to cover. So Coach Perucci and his staff just completely leveled as they threw the ball up with a, what, 16, 17 seconds just to kind of test the air, test the waters, and it comes back to bite him as Wells intercepts it, intercepts it, and then Coach Cornford calls the play to Richards, and it's a beautiful pass. Oh, beautiful pass, great catch, because the safety had gotten over, but he was just a step late. And he caught that ball, stayed in bounds, and able to make it in the end zone. Heck of a ball player. So what looked like an almost sure 7-2 to halftime score, all of a sudden is a demonstrably different 14-2 to score. But more than the numbers on the scoreboard is the vibration and the, and the energy and now you've got this BHS crowd thinking hey all right 12 points to score in this game is going to be tough 
Well, you know, another big game held here, it must have been about 10 years ago, Shocker's arch rival Wasco, remember, tried to come into Bakersfield High, and Bakersfield High showed him a little bit of big boy ball. Right now, the teams are, are close to even, but that play right there was huge. What a pass by Ryan Iniguez to Isaiah Richards, and coach called it before it happened. They went right to it. But it was an absolutely beautiful dime, and I mean right on the money. Low kick taken at the 12-yard line. And some big contact out there. The Goodness. Up to the what a big hit by Maddox Dumatre. I mean, he absolutely hammered that running back and shoved him to the side. So another big hit by Dumatre. You know, last possession here by Shafter. We were talking, is Coach Perucci going to take a knee or not? I want a red vine off of it, but I think Injured hindsight being 2020, I, I think he wishes he'd have taken a knee. Well, and then with point ninth okay, of a second. Game is the game of the week on the current high net okay, so you've got Brenton Brown. Tonight is Vance Paul and Okay, so now I would imagine that we're not going to see any more attempts at anything on this play. Well, you never know. Yeah, I just don't think Shafter has the matchup versus any of the driller DBs, you know, the, that glaring matchup. Their matchup is up front. But, boy, we've already seen how the return of Mackey defensively for the drillers has really bolstered uh, their front seven. Coach ferrucci has got a play. He's going to use it. They give it to the big fella on the ground, and that's going to do it for the first half. So, the first half, well, there is a flag down, but it'll be declined. It's on the offense. 14. The the receiver <laughs> up top didn't think they were going to run a play, and he was moseying over to his spot. Didn't get there when the ball was snapped. Yeah, false start on the offense, and I think that's going to be it. That'll yeah. do it for the first half. So 14-2, to two, so an historic game between two very storied okay, programs. And there has been some early drama, but there's going to be a lot more as we come back in the that's third quarter. We sure hope you're enjoying all of this. I'm Vance, he's Rich, and Julian's going to turn us out here for the half. We'll see you at the third quarter. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your public. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had a chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that 
we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. A lot of more uh, hands-on activities, a lot more about woodworking and, and what to do, how to make a career for myself. It's not only for guys. I am actually learning how to make cupboards and put it together, like doors, cabinets. It's really fun, actually. It's really amazing to see their growth over the course of a year and how they can come in with no real skill at all and leave being able to actually produce furniture and cabinetry. Houses need cabinets, businesses, having a pool of resources or kids that have some knowledge in the industry would be real good. Pull down on that. Let's slide these up. Watch fingers. It's changed a lot. What I'm seeing here is what it's going towards. The CNC equipment, computers. I could actually build cabinets out of this shop. It's, it's state of the art. It really is. I am constantly looking for students that have been through these programs. It's always nice to have a person that has some experience. It's a lot easier to train. I think we're fortunate in Bakersfield that the current high school district has invested in a program like this. I would encourage other businesses to partner up with the Kern High School District like I've done here because this really shows you what can be done if business comes together with the Kern High School District. This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation, Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, then you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people in my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Plourd since he's worked at so many companies, being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. Shearing my lamb for fair. I have two lambs. <laughs> Taking care of animals is you feed them twice a day, make sure they have water, walk them, make sure they're ready for fair. Vet science is the first year before you can actually go into animal science, and it's a lot of like hands on with the different animals, and you get to learn different things such as giving shots, castrating, all that fun stuff. For me, wanting to be a vet when I'm older, it helped prepare me. All the stuff that I'm learning in ag is definitely going to help me. I'm in ag communications. Anything that you see on the Facebook page is what we do, and pictures, and we do all the posters that are around campus, anything that just promotes ag. Our students are all part of the FFA organization, and through that we have a chapter officer team. We do monthly chapter meetings because we're trying to get them involved outside of class they can find something that they're interested in and they need something that's going to hook them so that they're ready for life after high school.
In animal care, the students learn a variety of things, whether it's tools or terms in the veterinary field. They learn about the skeletal systems, the animal nutrition, the housing, how to properly care for them. They also have the opportunity in the spring to actually go work at a veterinary hospital or at an animal shelter or a grooming and salon. Animal restraint, weight and temperature, pulse, respiration, all of that I learned here. They take a state certified test, and if they pass, they become a certified vet assistant right out of high school. It's always hands-on, and so I think that's what really helps us is that we're not just getting it from a textbook. We're actually doing these things, and we're actually practicing these things that we'll be doing in our future careers. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had the chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. Manufacturing engineering. We design parts, 3D parts, 2D parts, and we create assemblies. It's helping me get training and all of this stuff, like the computer programs that we have here, the machines that we have here. We learn a lot of math in here, mostly geometry and fractions, because I love math. That's why I'm in this class. Mr. Lemmy, he's a great instructor. So the problem is this piece itself. He really goes hands-on with us. He helps us as much as we can. We've learned a lot from him. Right now we're supplying students that are skilled in safety, basic operation of machine work. And then they also leave with some soft skills. They understand they have to be on time. They understand that they have to get up and talk to people. Most of them are walking out of here with a solid foundation in the entry level of a trade. They can have a job anywhere they go because they have a basic understanding of what it's going to take to put products out that people are going to use. Hopefully this is a good career for me. You know, end up doing something good, have a good life, and make some money. <laughs> We're learning a lot and especially with just the basic knowledge of what you would need for an entry-level job. All the basic skills to be a medical assistant in a doctor's office or a clinic. You're leaning on it and that'll make a difference. And then they also do on-the-job training and they work in doctor's offices or clinics throughout Kern County. The kids are job ready, and many of them are employed before the end of the school year. They're promised a job, as well as they continue their education. We have many registered nurses out there and even physicians. I'm thinking I want to be an anesthesiologist. So a lot of school, but it'll be worth it in the end.
we're learning the different roles, what a game designer is, what they do, and how video games are made, and how to deconstruct them. We're also going to be teaching the hard skills, which includes learning the Unreal Engine. What the Unreal Engine is, is it's a game development tool that students will be able to use to make their very own video games. And this is something that actually industry professionals use every day to make uh, some of the top selling games. They're all the same size. You're all on the same plane. There's no undulating terrain or anything like that. Our instructor, he's really amazing. He encourages everybody. He's really fun and he makes learning fun. So they've got top of the line computers here and they're set up to excel. I would be surprised if other students their age coming out of high school would have anywhere near the level of expertise that these guys are going to have. A lot of more uh, hands-on activities, a lot of more about woodworking and, and what to do, how to make a career for myself. It's not only for guys. I am actually learning how to make cupboards and put them together, like doors, cabinets. It's really fun, actually. It's really amazing to see their growth over the course of a year and how they can come in with no real skill at all and leave being able to actually produce furniture and cabinetry. Houses need cabinets, businesses, having a pool of resources or kids that have some knowledge in the industry would be real good. Pull down on that. Let's slide these up. Watch fingers. It's changed a lot. What I'm seeing here is what it's going towards. The CNC equipment, computers. I could actually build cabinets out of this shop. It's, it's state of the art. It really is. I am constantly looking for students that have been through these programs. It's always nice to have a person that has some experience. It's a lot easier to train. I think we're fortunate in Bakersfield that the current high school district has invested in a program like this. I would encourage other businesses to partner up with the current high school district like I've done here because this really shows you what can be done if business comes together with the current high school district. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities.
Welcome back, everybody. We're about ready to start the third quarter. A lot of discussion taking place between myself and Rich, Cor Rich Cornford and Julian Wilson, but I'd like to hear Rich's thoughts on the first half. Well, really disjointed a lot. Both sides had uh, penalties that just threw them off. And then we saw some late fireworks by the drillers. You know, Shafter had the ball at the one-yard line, didn't get any points out of that. So it's still anybody's ball game. This is the start. Wow. That the generals absolutely needed. Oh, and how about this? Are you kidding me? I look for flags. I'm looking everywhere, and there is none. How about this? Marion Sloan. The last person to have a chance was the kicker, and he stumbled a little bit. Wow. you got to be kidding me. So just like that, you said anything can happen, Coach. Boy, you're on tonight. You are on fire tonight. Well, Marion Sloan is a touchdown machine. He has four receiving touchdowns in the first two games. And then we see this the kickoff returns. We'd mentioned in each of their previous games they'd return kickoffs for touchdowns. And this is why BHS hadn't kicked it deep yet to him. Um, and so the Coach, you look at the, there's zero wind. I mean, not, a, not even a, a whiff of wind anymore. It's completely stopped. And our director and our producer, Julian Wilson, mentioned, do you realize that Shafter scored at least 50 points in their first two games, at least 50, so 100 points in two games, and only had two. And now all of a sudden, just like that, <laughs> they've got nine very quickly. So what a start to the second half of Bakersfield High School. Wow. Pierce would be rough in the kicker. Flag does come up. And it's roughing the, the kicker. kicker. Will be All right, assessed. well, you couldn't ask for a better off. start than that by for Coach Perucci. Didn't even have to take a snap. Who's after special teams. And, and Coach Perucci felt very confident about his special teams coming in. They kick it well, they punt it well, and they return it well. And uh, just a great job of seeing that opening and exploiting it by uh, Marion Sloan, who is just a sophomore. Again, I think that's one of the, both of these teams have a number of good younger players uh, on their roster. That's a lot of speed for a sophomore. I bet he runs track. <laughs> well, I hadn't even really started off my prologue into the third quarter and my prognostication of what Coach Perucci was talking to his generals about. My thought was going to be, it's behind us. Let's make something happen. Our first possession, let's get some positive Back yardage, and let's get on the board. Boom. It, little did I think it would be an 80-yard return. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful return. Now, that was the 15-yard variety there. And so we've got Shafter kicking off from the 45 of the drillers. So this is a great time to onside kick. I love to onside kick in these situations because you really don't have much to lose. You can kick to the end zone, right, and they get the ball at the 20. You onside kick it. If you don't get the onside kick, they probably get the ball at the 30. And hey, if you got a 20% chance of getting it, those are, those are not bad odds for the bang for your buck you get. No onside here. They just said, nope, we're going to get rid of it. So if you went to the kitchen or the fridge or somewhere, and when you win, it was 14-2, to two, and all of a sudden it's 14-9. That's because the opening kickoff into the third quarter was returned to the house. Wow. <laughs> Go figure. Drillers come out trying to really establish themselves. We've seen some big plays. Several of them got called back, but the biggest play right before the end of the half was the perfect pass by Iniguez to Isaiah Richard for a touchdown as time was ticking down. Drillers start on the ground, and Shafter there to meet oh them. My, the generals come out fired up. Got to be impressed no with that kidding. front of the, the Shafter generals oh, just getting after. Parker Valderrama is one of the highlighted players and so much so he's jersey number 55 for the generals and he's so much so that he was chosen for the Kern High Network front poster picture for this game tonight 
as well as a few other players, but his stature in the photo was prominent. The senior, Parker Valderrama, number 55, 6'3", 318 pounds. A very, very big, strong dude. And the coaching staff, that's going to be movement on the drillers, I think. Yeah, I saw that one flinch. And in speaking with the driller coaches. Dead ball encroachment on the general. It was on Shafter. Coach Sheehy, he said, well, I was asking him about what he his thoughts were about the opponent tonight and <laughs> the first number he mentioned was 55 the very first number he mentioned was 55 coaches no jersey numbers second down and four yeah he's a guy that goes both ways for the generals and coach Perucci thinks has an opportunity to play at the next level uh, i would think so he's not just big he's strong and he knows how to hit good timing watch those big guys if they've got a good get off man that's the that's the difference maker Oh, my goodness. Timeout. Okay, timeout. Timeout. An early, 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 early timeout. Ten and a half remaining in this third quarter. We've just started. I'm Vance Palm. I'm with Rich Cornford and Julian Wilson. We make up the broadcasting team tonight for the Kern High Network. We are live, and we have exclusive coverage of these events throughout the regular season in football, volleyball. Um, we've done a lot of different things, wrestling, basketball, the fine arts, marching band competitions and we're so proud to be in our seventh year i can't believe it we started in 2016 we called a game at frontier rich cornford was on the football field and what was the significance of the team that we had there coach that was the hated cabrillo conquistadors my <laughs> arch rivals when i was in high school <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Marcus Cornford, who was the MVP of that game. He, he was. He was our player of the game. First ever on the Kern Night Network. How's that? Looks like a broken play, and it is. Ooh. Ouch. Coming out of a timeout. Sack behind the line. Is so Iniguez, as Coach just said so aptly, they came from a timeout that was called early. So with 10 and a half left in the third quarter, third Coach Sheehy had to burn a timeout, and they go back in the huddle, and it doesn't work. You talk about frustration. Yeah, and you know, I'm looking defensively. Shafters flip-flop in their corners according to which way Isaiah Richard plays. They don't want to get caught up in that matchup again. But I, I, st I just don't know if they've got anybody that can run with him. You see the safety way over to his side on the bottom here. Quick little flick out here to the near side, and it's taken by Abbott. Abbott, oh, a nice move, and he keeps going, and... The only thing that Sloan can do is grab the jersey. Yeah, nice job by Abbott, but great job blocking that time by Isaiah Richards, showing some balance. He's not just a guy that goes after the ball in the air, but he blocks really well for his teammates. But that's a big conversion right now for the drillers. They didn't want to give the ball a three and out back to the generals after the generals took that kickoff back. One of the things we noticed... Uh, when Robert Smith was at quarterback, they threw a lot of, more of those. That's, I think, the first one that we've seen uh, Ryan and Iguis throw as far as the, the short, quick passes to the outside. VZ. And looks like the generals are starting to lay the wood. Some couple of big hits on this series alone. They're starting to maybe they might have had some fusion of some discussions with their coaches like, guys, we're bigger and we're stronger. Let's let's make some make a few statements with our shoulder pads and our helmets. And they play with a lot of pride. There's a reason there's only 30 guys on that roster, and that's because they expect a lot from their guys. They don't just say, "Hey guys, you want to come out for football? Just show up." You know, the, this this general program is a program from top to bottom that Gerald Perucci just does a great job with, uh, coaching these guys up and getting them to play hard and making them understand the effort it takes to be successful. Second and seven, and here come those generals. They, the defense is starting to step up and get it done. All right, so great job again at the point of attack. Are you feeling some rain? I'm feeling some sprinkles. We're feeling some sprinkles come down here. What in the world is happening? Sprinkling. You can see it in the lights. Heads up, Julian. We've got rain. Watch for the drillers to maybe this play or next series bootleg their quarterback because I don't think anybody was on the quarterback that last play 
you look up on the lights, it's raining. Welcome to fall. <laughs> We've seen it all. Good run. Third and seven. Big play here for the drillers. Fired across the middle, and it's dropped. Oh, man. And it was intended out there for Grigo. The intended receiver was Grigo. Incomplete brings up fourth down. Well, he was down. right at the first down marker. So fourth down for the drillers. Okay, now, from the coaching standpoint, we've already seen some uh, high snap on a punt. Whenever I see that, I make sure uh, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on them than normal because you, you want to make them pay when they get a snap like that that throws the timing off by a second. Because ideally, you should be able to punt the ball in about 2.1 seconds from snap to kick. Anything over that could be blocked. 1,001, 1,002. All right, so the timing on that was pretty good. It's going to bounce midfield, bounces sideways, and we want to give a very special hello to Susan Chides, the long time beloved athletics department office guru for all of the athletics at Bakersfield High School. I know when my kids started coming to BHS and they were playing volleyball, I was greeted by the one and only, the lovely Susan Chides and was able to get those warm and fuzzy feelings about your kids coming in to play high school athletics when you have somebody like that in Mr. Scott's office. Hi, Susan. Thanks for watching and listening. Appreciate it. Well, these drillers obviously do a lot of things right with their athletic programs, you know. It, it's uh, been a shining star for this town for a long time. The pump fake, the double fake. He's got a man open and oh, just over the outstretch hands of Figueroa. And that was Jesus Figueroa. Man, that was close. Oh, would have been a double quick strike right away. Yeah. Boy, great, great job running the route. Just missed finishing it. Now again, Shafter's got a lot more guys going both ways than the drillers do. I'm anxious to see how they hold up here late into the third and then into the fourth quarter. They get to the line quickly. They give it to their big fella, but he's met with some defiance up there in the front and of course again it's Mackey hitting Espinosa those two have gotten to know each other pretty well over the last two quarters well I'll tell you what this Mackey this is the first time I've got to watch him play and he is a difference maker out there when when he is in the game you better know where he is and then run away from him double covered down low here What? Sloan! And look at the Shafter faithful across the way. They're up, and they're making some noise. Touchdown, Shafter. Wow, 52 yards. That was, what's so impressive about that play is walking, watching Ezekiel Osborne go through his progression. You don't see high school quarterbacks do that very much. Usually they're going to pick somebody out and throw that guy. You saw him look one way, go the other when he knew it was there, throw a strike, and then great job after the catch. But that's that 4R system. And it's a system that he understands. Uh, you know, and he's just a sophomore making those reads. A great point, Coach. And just like that, it's 15-14 Shafter. The snap, the hold. And this is right through. And again, there's not a drop of wind now. But there's sprinkles. Special night indeed. So welcome, everybody. If you're just getting to the live stream of the Current High Network, and I'm getting texts and social posts from a lot of people that are listening, and they're saying, I wouldn't have missed this game. I'm listening. Lori Miller Sundgren, I'm talking to you. This is the game we're expecting. Uh, you know, a little, now little it more is. flow to it, yeah. And I'm anxious to see how the drillers respond like after Shafter the takes their first lead of the game. The so the start of the third quarter is a kickoff, ran back for a touchdown, and then the drillers didn't get much going. And then the generals, who did their homework at halftime, struck quickly. And all of a sudden, it's a two-point lead for 
the generals. The practice field, the white infinity, Q508 XEF229, <laughs> and a blue Toyota Cam 5 UJP. If you're sitting at home and you know your license plates and it's one of your kids that parked your car, you get the luxury of getting that service through our live stream tonight. You're getting to hear that your car is parked illegally and it's about to get towed. <laughs> Okay, under seven to go here in the third quarter. The Generals will kick off, and it's going to be an eight iron, and it's put right over there by the 23-yard line. Oh, a nice, nice bit of nifty running there. He's got some blocking. Can he do it? It's Davis Olsen. Olsen looking to get down the sidelines. What a run to the 23-yard line. I don't see any flags anywhere. Great running, great downfield blocking. First and ten drillers deep inside general territory. So to your point, Coach, now it's starting to get ratcheted up a little bit. There we go. And special teams have been huge in this game so far. And Olsen, what a great job with that ball. So many times it really bugs me. When guys fair catch those balls, right? Of I mean, course. He, but that's that's what I want kids to do. I want them to catch it and attack. And great job reading his blocks over there. And good job putting a hat on a hat by, by the driller front line guys. For you young players out there, if you decide to not fair catch it and take off with it, all you have to tell your youth coach is, Coach Corford said I could do it. And they'll all go, okay. <laughs> If Rich said do it, I'm good with it. And I like your point, Coach. It's an easy-to-handle ball. You've got all the blocking in front of you. You've got a gap of about 30 yards before anybody's close to you. Take the rock and run with it. I love it. First and 10, drillers at the 25-yard line. And here they come. They're on the ground. They're marching. And, oh, if he doesn't get knocked out of bounds, Bryson Abbott would have a touchdown. And we saw... Taken out of bounds by Nine points Not scored up right up until about 15 first seconds left drillers. in the first half. And then, boom, another touchdown by the Drillers right at the end of the half. And now, all of a sudden, it looks like it's going to be a scoring fest. Ryan Iniguez is in for the banged-up Robert Smith, who got laid out in the first quarter, and he's done a fine, fine job. Can Abbott get outside? No, he cannot. Wow. Goodness gracious. Boy, the general certainly won the line oh, of scrimmage man. on that play. Cordova on the stop for man, the general. You talk about a play. Matthew Cordova, number 52, he was being double-blocked, double-teamed on that. And he still ran over Bryson Abbott. Man, that is a strong, strong young man. Matthew Cordova, a junior, six foot, 255 pounder. I mean, he had two guys on him. Yeah. He doesn't skip leg day. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's a more interesting complexion here. Second and goal from the 11. Abbott, oh, right in the middle of the pile. He took a big hit, but kept going. What's a tough young man right there. He Boy, got popped. And they are battling up front. He got hit hard, and he wants to say something, too. <laughs> He's getting helped over to the hash mark by his teammates. They're fixing his shoulder pads and his jerseys. He had something to say, and he's a diminutive running back, not the biggest guy. Well, speaking of the biggest guy, the drillers just put Mackey in the game, and I've got to believe he's either going to be lead blocking for somebody or carrying the ball here, maybe the next two plays. They bring out Kalik Austin, they jog him off, and they put Mackey in there, and he's gonna line up. And it's just a, it, it looks like an eye formation to the naked eye, it's a little offset. Mackey may lead the blocking for Abbott, does he? He does. So Mackey plows forward, Abbott tries to get as close as he can. And now it'll be fourth and goal. I think they got it to about the three, coach. And here you've got that decision. You missed a short field goal earlier, but there was a lot of wind at that point. A field goal does put you in the lead. Oh, they marked it way back at the, the three. Yeah. That's, that's, I thought it was down to about the one and a half. So did I. Again, they, that was a power play. Ran right behind Mackey. They're He's, letting the clock go. It, it looks like it might be a timeout. And it is. They're going to burn a timeout here. Let's not forget this moment. At 4:19, they call the timeout left in the third quarter. Timeout. Let's not forget he burned one at 
at the beginning of the third quarter. So now there's one timeout left with a quarter and a quarter to play. What are your thoughts and expectations here, Coach? Well, this is a giant play, and I think if you're, there's any indecision, that you take that timeout, you talk with your other coaches about, hey, what do we got for this situation? This is going to be your best two-point play that you're essentially going to run here. Um, again, three yards out is a lot different than one and a half or two. Um, so this is why you know, they brought in Coach Sheehy to make these kind of decisions. The stands are packed on this side. They're about 80% full on the Shafter side. It's a big, big night. The weather's turned out to be sublime. All right, so Mackey is not in the game, which makes me guess that they might go play action pass here. Well, he's got his tee out, so it looks like they're going oh, no, for they're going field goal. Okay. You've got Makai Dallas. We did see Shafter block one earlier. Now it got called Oh, it's back. not Makai. It's going to be... This one's up, and this is hammered through. I don't have a jersey number. <laughs> number 12. No, yeah. it's 18. Right? The kicker was 18. I thought. Are my eyes deceiving me? Well, and the public address announcer, I, was also, I think he's also looking for that jersey number. Huh. Well, there is a Jack Hopkins, 18, for Bakersfield High. Six foot, 175 sophomore. That looks about, yeah, I think that's who it is, Jack Hopkins. Oh, okay, well, you've got Max Preps. Good old Max Preps. Well, sometimes it's good old Max. When the coaches do a good job like both of these guys did of making sure everybody's on that roster, it's, it's nice. Sometimes we get them, and it's numbers have changed. And so Jack Hopkins... And I got to tell you, that was an aggressive, no thought about it, just boom. And it's 17-16. I've got a special hello here after, after this kickoff. All right, now this one right here, Coach, is caught. Oh. And oh, he goes out of bounds with it. Oh, man. That ball was going out of bounds. And Jonathan Escovedo caught it and... Went out of bounds. How about this for a special hello to our Crew 9 Network audience tonight. The one and only, the incomparable Dan Tudor himself, longtime broadcaster with our main man, Greg Kerr. Dan Tudor, watching live stream from North Carolina. He says, Vance, go Generals. A proud Shafter General. Wonderful man, great broadcaster. And... He's immersed himself in a life of sports, mentoring, and just one of the, my favorite people on the planet. And what a general Dan Tudor is. To start off this drive, they go to the big guy, Chris Espinoza. Espinoza the when I was a carrier. junior basketball player at Cal State University during Christmas break, Kenny Ammon and I, who then became, um, he, well, Kenny Ammon went on to be the, the record-setting all-time oh, three-point shooter for Stanford, six. and now he's the longtime national Getting champion coach four, at Concordia. Kenny Ammon and I stayed in Dan Tudor's dorm room during Christmas of our my junior year. Needless to say, Dan, <laughs> Dan was very gracious about our, our winter stay. <laughs> Ball goes oh up, boy. it's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Oh, and it floats up there for a moment. And pass. Ooh, dangerous. And Damon Simmons almost got to that, and that would have been a pick six to the house. So now all of a sudden, you got that driller D stepping in. Yeah, that ball was in the air for a long time. Third and six here for the Shaft of Generals. We've seen them be electric on offense and special teams already this half. Get that momentum back. They're going to need a first down here. Third and seven. They give it to Espinosa. He's going to get the first because he's going to run over somebody. Wow. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I, I saw it coming, but he delivered. Jail Wells took a big hit. My goodness, that was that was a big hit. Well, I preemptively called the first down because I said he's got he's got five yards to go. Yeah. He's going to get that. 
Wow. Boy, I love the way that play was designed. It was a quick screen that was meant to come right back right. in real quick. The, that is the answer to the drillers blitzing up the middle so much because you lose that pursuit when you do that. So great play call by Gerald Perucci once again. Draw play now to Espinosa. Can he get outside? He can. And uh, <laughs> well said. I'm going for the ankles. I'm going for the ankles this time. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. You I'm a quick do learner. That. I'm a quick learner. <laughs> that that cat will be knocking lots of people over. Wonder if they give him surf, uh, surfing Seven lessons there the when he runs people over with the ball in his hand. He's a junior coach. Oh, I'm telling you, this chapter team is crazy oh, young. As are the drillers. Under three to go in the third quarter, shaping up to be an instant classic. And this time, it's out to the outside. Look out, Cash Gutierrez down the sidelines. And he gets in, Cash Gutierrez. Touchdown, oh, Generals. Oh, flag way back at the 40. And it may be holding because he got out there pretty quick, flag Coach. He got out there pretty quick. Holding on the Generals. Well, the, the drillers had had a taste of that in the first half, getting some plays called back. And now the generals get a huge one called back. I think it'll just take it right back to about the original line of scrimmage. So how about that? Haven't even called Cash's name tonight. And we joked about it earlier in the broadcast. Being an Arvin guy, I grew up with a bunch of Gutierrez's. We we'll called it Gutierrez. But knowing that we have a lot of Gutierrez in the Valley, I'll go with Gutierrez. Cash is a sophomore coach. Uh, we, it sounds like a broken record. But, I mean, these guys could be, a lot of them could be playing JV football. Can you imagine them playing JV football with this kind of talent? They go back to Cash. This time he's met with force at the line of scrimmage. I talked to Coach... Perucci, kind of about that, I'd listened to him on Greg Kerr's show, speaking to Greg, and last week, and he was talking about how the bulk of this team played in that game last year, the Mud Bowl, the infamous one, and no gain on the says, I haven't had to do a lot of pump-up talks. I haven't had to do a lot of those, you know, real high-level inspirational talks. These players, they want their hungry. Second and eight. Two receivers split way out to the right side. They stay on the ground, though. In between the hash. Espinoza, the ball carrier. And this is back to their big guy. Jersey number 44, Chris Espinoza. He's had a big role tonight. Let's not forget how many yards he chewed up in the first half as well. And they didn't capitalize Takes on it. Couldn't cash it in. But yard line. And 140 to go three. in the third quarter here. And this is, this is Shafter's ball game here. Ball control running game, and then taking shots here or there with the passing game, and they do a really good job of taking what you give them. Quick pitch out to the left side. Nice job by the big blue defense there. Boy, that's a really, really good play. That is a strong, strong effort. And leading the charge out there was Yvonne Garcia. All right, fourth and short four maybe a long three whether it's Yvonne or Ivan young Garcia made a great play jersey number 52 big call here coach and they're gonna have to call it they're gonna have to snap it before the end of the quarter or it'll be a delay of game yeah trip formation to the right looking at coach Perucci for the call here after he sees the defense thrillers adjust got a a quick slant, and it's caught out there for the first down. Nice play. Great execution. Oh. Flag on the play, and it's, flag on the play, however, I would think it may be. I think they got linemen downfield is what I'm guessing. Is that what it is? I think it was an RPO. Oh, man. Against the general. So the run pass option play can catch you sometimes because the linemen release and go downfield. Yeah, they're run blocking on that. and You know, he got it out pretty quick. Yeah, that's the only thing. I thought that was a. Well, it was. It was very well executed. And so now they're going to boot it because it'll be fourth and eight. And 
The right. wind, wind is starting to pick up a little bit again, and now it's coming directly from the north. So it's right at the back of the shaft for punter. If I'm the shaft for punter, if I'm Coach Brucci, I tell him don't kick it anywhere near the return guy. It might take the bounce they're looking for. It's bobbled. It's bobbled again. He's in trouble, but he makes a beautiful move. Tries to go backwards, and that doesn't work. But Rogers finally brought down. So 15.4 seconds remains in this third quarter. What a fantastic football game. We want to thank the BHS administration, Principal Ben Shirley, the AP of Instruction, Alicia Olenek, AP of Administration, Melissa Rizzo, one of the best. Two of the deans, Brian Smith and Shelly Black, athletics director, our good friend Tamara. What a fantastic athletic director. And the activities director, the one and only, the incomparable Anna Olson. Thank you, Bakersfield High School. What a special night, a nostalgic night. It's been a lot of fun so far, and we've got another quarter of football here. Great public address announcer. The weather's been splendid. The pregame down there was just, I mean, we're, you and I are walking around, you know, BHS royalty down there and some general royalty down there. I mean, I spent a few minutes with the great Mark Hudson. Unfortunately, all we talked about was Bo Redstone. Here we go. <laughs> First and 10 from the 17 yard line. The drillers want to be careful with this football. They fling it out here to Richards. Richards had a couple big plays already tonight. Gets knocked out of bounds. And, you know, Coach, this wind has picked up again, and the drillers are going to have the football with the wind at their back here in this fourth quarter. It's coming yeah. right at them off the train tracks. Yeah, that could be big if it keeps up. Love that first down call there by Coach Sheehy. Uh, you know, they've been run, 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 and uh, they saw the good matchup that Shafter's playing with a pretty good cushion on their best receiver and threw it out there for an easy game. Another first and 10. This one's batted up into the air. Incomplete pass. Intended receiver was Abbott. Looked like you were out of Salcedo, another sophomore at outside linebacker there batted that ball down. Salcedo, that's a Shafter name. You know, Shafter giving us some of the best coaches in town when you go back to Jan Stuby and Brian Nixon and now Perucci, who's a Shafter alum. Great community. I know Council Winkler agrees. Well, they got an uncovered receiver down here. It's Abbott cutting up against the grain, and that'll do it for the third quarter. 17-16, what a ball game we've got. This is the Kern High Network. When we come back, it'll be the fourth quarter, and I promise you it's going to be a thriller right after this. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. BHS cheerleaders singing Party in the USA. Definitely a party here on California Avenue tonight. What a game as we start the fourth quarter. 
between the Drillers who have 17 and the Generals have 16. What a nice, nice football game. I'm Vance Palm, and I'm joined by Rich Cornford and Julian Wilson. And the ball carrier picks up maybe one. During the short break that we had, Coach Cornford was saying, no gain on the play. man, Vance, Fourth down. both of these teams are young, but the Generals are particularly young, and in a couple of years, fall of 2025, they're going to be able to play with anybody. I mean anybody. You know, your your Liberties, your Clovises. I mean, they these guys are very impressive. A lot of tens on this roster when you see the grade for the Generals. Coach Sheehy believes they're young as well. Whistles blow. Matter of fact, when I talked to Coach Sheehy out on the practice field tonight, I said, Coach, let's go over a couple things. And I said, you miss basketball? He said, of course. I was will. Always will, but I felt this is where I need to be, and I'm glad to be here. I said, what keeps you up at night with this football team? What are, where are some of your opportunities for growth here? And he said, nah, we're pretty young. You know, we're a pretty young team, and last week we, we had to learn some tough lessons and had to live through some challenges when we had that Time tough, out, tough loss General. at Frontier. And I said, all right, well, let's talk about some of the positives. What do you like about this squad? And he goes, we're young. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you're a smart, smart guy. I mean, that's how you get to the NFL and survive up there by being smart. So the youth is both the challenge and the privilege for Coach Sheehy. Timeout. Talk to Coach. Well, I call him Coach Wolford. Steve Wolford, the, the legend himself and Trying to, I'm trying to hoax him up on the microphone, trying to hoax him up here to get up here and, and join us in the Kern High Network. He used to be one of the analysts for the Bakersfield Blitz when Coach Van Horn was coaching the Blitz. And So what do you think about tonight? He said it's going to be a very, very hard-fought, really good game. He thought it'd be close, and it is. And here we are. Boy, so, you talk about a legend. I mean, one of the top recruits in the nation his senior year in that ball club. Okay, looking for a good snap. The drillers are. They get it. Pretty good punt, and it's allowed to bounce around, and it'll go down at about the 31-yard line. So what will Coach Perucci and the Generals come up with here with a quarter to work with? Coach, you talked about Perucci football, ball control, creating their own tempo. We've got the big running backs in... Espinoza, and they've also got Cash Gutierrez, and he's a sophomore at 5'10", 190. He had a big run. Did we have a flag on that play? I have no idea. They brought it back to the original line of scrimmage, though. I did not see yellow at all. Now they're moving the chains. Personal foul on the drillers. Oh, boy. And Coach Sheehy would like some explanation. It seemed like a late call and really an unannounced call. Sometimes in these situations, somebody has said something, you know, that we can't pick up over here. You're so right. You're so right. All right, so midfield for the Generals here, down one with 11 minutes to play. So that ultimately results in the Shafter squad taking the ball smack dab in the middle of the football field. And that wind is roaring again. And so here it comes, and it's, it's rolling in right off of the railroad tracks. Osborne wants to let it fly, and it's almost wow. picked off. Oh, goodness. In and out of the hands oh, Julian Grego almost got that, and that would most definitely go into the house. There was nobody to stop him. He was out in the Badlands, and it would have been gone. Boy, he was in the perfect position to make that play. Now he's just got to finish. Great protection by the Shafter offensive line. That was a Correction. poor decision there by Ezekiel. quickly gets it out and this might end up being a first down and this ball comes out it's strip falls on the ground it's a fumble
Driller, Driller ball. football. Well, that's the second big fumble there for the Shafter Generals. The other one occurred in the red zone. Great job of eluding the first tackler, but man, you got to keep that thing high and tight. There's a driller down, and you could see it happen right in front of our eyes. He had the ball up high. And we will take a short time out here with 10.41 remaining in the football game, or at least in regulation. We'll be back right after this in the Current High Network. Don't go anywhere. So Wells is up and off the field. It was Jail Wells that went down. But they stripped the ball out of the general's hands and it happened right in front of us. You could see it happening almost in slow motion. So now with this wind starting to pick up, it is at the driller's back. Iniguez takes the snap. He's in trouble, goes down. Sack behind the line of scrimmage. And there he is, Parker Valderrama, again. Valderrama yeah. on the well, sack You know how hard it is for these big guys to go both ways, you know? And we talked about that. And to, to have that motor, man, that speaks a lot about Parker Valderrama. And again, Coach Perucci feels like he's got next-level potential. Seven, and well, I think Coach Sheehy thinks the same thing. Yeah. So if you're watching this, everybody, it's tough to see those jersey numbers, but he's on the defensive line right in front of you. Second one in, the second guy in. Playing from a two-point stance. They flick it over to Abbott. Abbott just loses his footing real close, and I think he got back to the original line of scrimmage or just inside it, so. It's going to be third Paul and nine. I'm anxious to see how much Coach Sheehy trusts Iniguez in this situation. Yep, to, me too. To throw the ball, or do you just run it and uh, then run your punt team out there? Third down and nine. Well, we'll find out on this play. You know, they called him the the salty veteran. He came in early in this game, real early, and he's done a fine, fine job. Third and nine. They flick it out here to the near side to Abbott. Can Abbott make something happen? He takes it head on. And he brought the wood out there to Roberto Aguirre. The but on the reception. not enough. And they're going to have to punt because they're at their own 43 with about five yards to go. So Shafter defense holds. Yeah, big hold by the Shafter defense to get a three and out here. And they got to do solid job with this punt return. Boy, 40 plus cheerleaders down there, over 40. One, two. For the drillers, very impressive. Nice snap, but here they come. Oh, it gets up, but it's a floater and a high bounce. And oh, it takes a nice couple of bounces. How about that? They're going about the 26 oh, what's yard this line. Guy doing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what Daniel Rodriguez was thinking or doing, but now potentially it was one of those, if he felt if they're just going to tap it and leave it there, I'm going to pick it up and run with it. That's an illegal touch. You don't have anything to lose. So maybe that, but I hate my guys getting that close to a ball rolling around because somebody, you know, give you a little hip check and fall into that ball. The optics aren't good. No. Under nine minutes to go here. What a fabulous football game. There's been a lot. If you're just getting to us, it's been a topsy-turvy game. Safeties, long touchdowns, long kickoff returns. Long touchdowns called back. A lot of, lot of long plays First by the drillers and called back. And one by the generals line. called back. Has his guy, floats it up into the wind and almost intercepted by VZ. But the re 
Sieber turned DB and just kind of had to cause some havoc. I'm telling you, Coach, this wind is just, you know, you, they're going to go into it for the rest of this quarter. They're going to have to figure it out. I was about to say the same thing. You could see the effect that wind had on that particular ball. It is coming right at their, in their face. How about this viewer, Kimmy Hildebrand? She has triplets. Senior triplets for drillers. She's not very busy. Hi, Kimmy. Lobs it up into the wind, and it's caught. Whoa! What a great play. Hauls it in for a long first down, and that's a really nice catch by who else? Marion Sloan. Nice timing on that. And again, really impressed with Ezekiel Osborne and just how he can. He throws well on the run. He throws well from the pocket. Uh, he runs decently, though we haven't seen him run yet, but I know he ran track in the offseason just specifically to get a little bit faster, which I think every kid should do. Here come the drillers. A big rush, but they get caught off guard, and the not caught off guard as much as the Shafter picked it up and got eight yards out of it. Yeah, when Shafter has been able to pick up that inside rush, they've done good things. It's kind of feast or famine from the drillers and just looking out there for the drillers right now. Mackey's coming off the field, and you would just wonder about his conditioning, this being his first game back. Getting his shoulder pads fixed, and he's heading to the bench. He wants to have a he wants to have a quick reprieve. Oh, he just grabs the water. He's not sitting down. A really, really nice job here by who else? Espinoza, and he picks up a first down. So here come the general just grinding away. Yeah, and I would expect as long as Mackey stays on the sideline there that that's going to be their M.O. as much as they can. I mean, Brucci will still throw the ball and spread it around. But uh, he definitely knows when number eight's in there or not in there. And it's that time of the game where everybody's watching the scoreboard on the clock, too. 8.04 and counting. Osborne looks over to the sidelines. We are under the eight-minute mark now. BHS leads by a scant one point, 17 to 16. Tossed out to the right side. Once in a while, you make one or two moves, and you're gone, and it almost happened. Great catch out there by Sloan again. Boy, what makes Shafter tough to defend is they're not a one-horse show. You know, they've, they've got several guys out here that can make you miss and make plays both running it and catching it. So it makes it very hard to defend them. Second and one. Pump fake. They go in the corner, but the wind gets it or it got tipped or he got hit. So... Osborne gets hit by Davis Olson. The ball floats up there, what seems like forever for both coaching staffs. And the driller coaching staff thought for sure that it was an offensive interference, interference. on Shafter. They think it's on the generals, all of the coaching staff. And Coach Shee's trying to get the attention of the line judge. They all felt that it was pass interference on Shafter. You know, defenders just don't get that call very often. Yep. No, you're right. You're right, coach. The receiver basically made an aggressive move to keep the DB from intercepting it. And to your point, tough call to get most of the time. So now all of a sudden it's first and 10 from the driller, 18. And the Big Blue's got to get deep into the grass here and make something happen. Thought I heard a whistle there. So did I, but we've been hearing them a lot tonight, so maybe it's just Pavlovian. Strong run up the front. Wow, and that's Cash. The terrorist, the ball carrier. Simmons on the stop for the Drillers. And that uh, Shafter Surf Company up front goal, is definitely generals. doing some surfer moves there because they that's what they call pancakes again, and they are owning the line of scrimmage right now. And that's going to be a flag on the drillers. Will it matter? I don't know if it will or not because there was too many men on the field. And it'll be first and goal from the one. And the flag from the line judge was because one of the drillers didn't get off in time. And it'll be moved up maybe. Or they might just decline it. And if we haven't had enough of Mother Nature tonight, we had... 95 degrees to start then we had a big wind then we had no wind then we had rain and then we get the remnants of that super blue moon 
48 hours later that's just appeared. What a beautiful sight. Drillers put Mackey back in the game. Now remember, Shafter was down. It was the opposite end zone, but they were in a similar situation earlier, and Bakersfield High just kept blitzing right up the gut. Ended up forcing a fumble in the first half. So my bet here is the Drillers are going to not change that recipe that they're gonna they're gonna bring heat right through the middle and sh make Shafter do something other than run between the tackles to score here the officials are having a quick discussion that's what I was wondering earlier when I was talking it declined okay they declined it they got the first down out of it so now it's and I, I think it's second down, but they'd rather have second and go from the one than first and go from the three or four, I guess. This is where I love being under center and just sneaking, but this is Shafter's offense. Watch these linebackers come here. Touchdown, nice Shafter. Nice job of, of running with vision. You're right, coach. He just kept his eyes where he needed to have it, and he's he, he's a tough load in the best of times. So now the generals are going to go for two here. The, you know, a couple kids ran on thinking they're going to kick the extra point, but you got to go for two because that'll put you up seven in this situation. Does really not a whole lot of good to be up by six. 22-17, as coach just mentioned, five-point lead. The wind is kicking in again. Now, I know Coach Perucci covers all his bases, so there's a play that they practiced two all week conversion. for two-point conversions, and, and this is this is it. A formation we haven't seen yet, this tight bunch set. Osborne takes it, looks, throws over to the left side, wide open if he can get it to him, and he does! Well executed. Two -point conversion is Everybody went to the right. Sloan General. snuck out to the left. And the protection was there for Osborne not to feel rushed, and he just floated it right out to the corner. And it is a 24-17 ball game with 642. I tell you, he's a great coach. That was a great call. You see the eye candy there with the guy in motion thinking, hey, man, coverage, there. that's going to be their read. Great job by Ezekiel Osborne of holding that ball and then letting it go. So, again, great coaches on both sides here playing a chess match. So a special night with, look at that shot. Thank you, Julian. How about that moon just peering down on Griffith Field? Even, the, even she can feel like something special is going on. All right, some heck of a half here by the Shafter Generals to get themselves in front. Remember, they were behind by a couple scores at, at halftime, but Ran that opening kickoff back. Now they need themselves to have great kick coverage here, kicking into a pretty stiff win. The great Tony LaCava, longtime sports editor for the Californian watching. Tony, great to see you. And how about this? Whoa. That was almost, had it stayed in, it would have been an onside kick. Oh, man. Ball was kicked out of bounds. How about that? It goes right into the wind. And it backed up, and it was almost taken by the generals. So BHS should get this ball at the 35-yard line. Or they're going to have them re-kick it. Which that, I always like doing that. If I felt like I had a dynamite return team, I wasn't going to let you off the hook by kicking it out of bounds. I was going to make you kick it to us. This ball get backed up five yards. Now, I, and if I was Shafter, I'm no way I'm kicking it to the deep guys here. But we've we've seen the short guys do good things with it. But uh, going to do something similar. And with this wind holding that ball up, your coverage team ought to get right on top of these guys and make them a little nervous when they're making that catch. Okay, so now as we just concluded, this wind is starting to play a role. A great night of mother nature mixed in with some big time football. What club will he use? A nine iron taken at the 32. 
Coach Cornford likes it because Olsen's going to try to run with it, and he's taken down at the 40. Nice job by Shafter. Not too much damage there. Yeah. Gain the drillers an extra five yards by having them redo it there. You got Olsen, who's sure-handed and confident in that spot. So six and a half minutes to play here. Drillers down a touchdown. And the drillers certainly have plenty of weapons, namely Isaiah Richard, who we've we've seen is a creates a problem to cover. So see how the generals deal with him. He'll be at the top of the screen over there, number seven. Shafter playing a cover three. Corners have deep coverage. Safety's got deep coverage. Iniguez fires and just over. The outstretched fingers of Julian Grego. So they try to strike deep right away. Actually, a pretty good call, and he was open. He was open, yeah. And we just, again, it's a game of inches. And you see that, you know, that wind carried that ball just a little bit. It's where you really got to throw the ball on a line when you got it behind you like that. The wind behind you like that. This time it's tossed out to the near side. Oh, what a nice move there by Abbott. Can he get anything out of it? No. Shafter closes the gap. Great job playing team defense by the generals there. Stringing that out. He cuts it back. You know, I mean, again, a lot of these generals going both ways. Right. And uh, big boys are, they, hey, this will be a memory that they'll always have the night they play the drillers. So. You can sleep in this weekend, but right now you got to go. The night they played the drillers. Great crowd here tonight, both sides. Big time. Third and long, 6.20 left in regulation. They flick this one out, and a safe throw by Iniguez. He was under pressure, and... Austin was asking for it and wanted it, but Niguez knew he had to chuck it. So the drillers forced to punt here with 6.14 to go in the fourth quarter. Coach. Look to get a three and out and get that ball back in good field position. But this is where you see, you know, I know Perucci loves to throw the ball, but this is where, hey, you're going to lean on that ground game to grind out some clock. You surprised the drillers didn't try to Back to Get some season. traction going on the ground. Yeah, a little bit surprised there, um, especially because that's that's been their mo with big plays. First Park big Kent. clean that's pure punt of the evening. That was a nice one. So Jack Hopkins got a hold of it and finally a real true field change as far as field position. Now, I think the wind has died down a little bit here. And, uh, again, it's, it, I'm anxious to see. Coach Perucci is not going to be the type. I say, you know, your four-minute offense where you grind some clock. But he will still throw the ball here. Uh, and the drillers are giving him a lot of space up top there to throw hitches. Get the ball back! Osborne takes a look. They're up seven. They hand it off to Espinoza. Espinoza plows ahead eight yards in the Shafter crowd, clapping their hands and giving out a big, yeah! Huge hole yep. on that play. Great job by that Shafter O-line. PC on the stop. Now they'll, they'll milk this clock here for all it's worth. Wait for that back judge to start signaling the last five Eight seconds. Second and then he'll get into his cadence. They keep it on the ground again. Oh, what a nice job there. Really nice job. And yeah, I, I really think if I'm Shafter, every play call from here on out goes away from Mackey because he's he just blows everything up that comes his his direction. But that was actually Benny West, number 88, that made that play. Okay. 
So Big Vinny West on the left side now. Third and two, huge play, huge play from both squads right here. Osborne takes his time, and they go to Espinoza. Espinoza able to take care of business, and boy, that is a tool in the tool chest that every coach would like to have. You love that pad level for a running back. Wow, such a valuable, valuable piece on the chessboard to give it to the junior and say, double four, it's all you. And he just, name me a big moment tonight that he hasn't come through. This time it stretched out to the near side. The drillers, great Ooh. pursuit. That ball was hung out there for yeah, a minute. Yeah. Cash Gutierrez. Better cover that thing up. Yeah, H high and tight, which means hold that thing against your breastplate. Don't let it swing like the old Wendell Tylers of the world. <laughs> Wendell Tyler, number 26. Wendell that, Tyler, that number Rams 26? 49ers. Julian, our director, producer, Julian, he, his, his ears pricked up. A Wendell Tyler reference. How about Vince Ferragamo? Love that dude. Second and 11, quick pitch out to the near side. Oh, drills all over it, but how about the oh. ball popped out and he goes to the big guy. Are you kidding me? The ball is and wow. Wow. The when Klutz goes gods. Flores. So Flores gets credit for the first down because it wasn't in a first until it popped in his hands. So there, there is a point in the game as a running back when you've got to realize that ball security is the single most important thing, more than fighting for extra yards. And when you're in that pile like that, the drillers did a great job of stripping that ball. you got to get down, and they're very fortunate to get that ball to bounce that way and then give them a first down off of it. That's going to be pretty disheartening for the drillers who only have one timeout left. So when Celso Flores, the junior lineman, jersey 59, and here comes Espinoza, he keeps churning and burning. Espinoza bulldogging his way up for seven <laughs> Even the home announcer giving him some props. He's right. Espinoza bulldog in his way. Well, this is where BHS wishes they had those timeouts back that they had burned early with only one left. Shafter is, uh, boy, a, almost a first down away from really putting this thing on ice. 240 left in regulation. Hard count. Ooh, I thought they got Everybody him. in Shafter, the entire crowd, the fans, the band, the coaches all thought it was encroachment. Espinoza, he bursts through the middle again. And that's a great example of ball protection there. He had a couple of drillers all over it, and he had that thing, as you say, tucked high and tight. And the big fella, Chris Espinoza, now is really making waves and a fortunate officials timeout for the drillers they get a chance to catch their breath because benny west had his helmet pop off so unfortunate for benny but the drillers get a brief brief respite from well, espinoza and that benny west is a physical specimen you look at him out there certainly passes the eye test and big play hopefully he'll be able to get back in there so you let the clock run here, but then you gotta after this play, you gotta take your time out if you're the you're the drillers. Again, Ezekiel Osborne is just gonna watch that back judge when he starts moving his hand. That's the final five seconds. That's when you wanna start your your cadence. There he goes. Now Espinoza breaks free. He's looking for the corner. He's looking for the end zone. Will he get it? I think he does. Touchdown. Wow. Chris Espinoza. And how apropos for the horse to finally get to the water. Boy, they you've that big offensive line with a big back like that. Man, and a passing game. This chapter offense is legit. We, we saw him basically held to no points. Their only points in the first half was a safety, but man, this offense has got stronger and stronger as the game gone on. Coach Perucci 
almost breaks Espinosa's hand when he slaps it and gives him five. That's the type of play that any coach would love to see. And for an emotional and high level emotional coach like Perucci, boy, that is fuel for the tank for these generals. And here is Guerrero for the PAT. That's up and that's good. So it makes it a 14 point football game now. 29 points scored in the second half, coach. Boy, again. Yeah, and they started with a bang. Well, returning the opening kickoff of the second half for a touchdown. They've done it through the air. They've done it by running the ball physically. Um, they're a very well-balanced football team. And now for the Drillers with 1.42 to go, it all starts with getting a good return here. They're not out of this game. They've shown the ability to hit huge plays, even when Shafter was playing at somewhat semi-prevent defense. So if I'm the Drillers, I'm going to find out where number seven is, and I'm going to throw them the ball almost no matter what. And I'm going to hopefully get this ball to about the 50-yard line with my return. And the kick's going into the wind. So the drillers probably want to bring up yeah, Rogers I, and Abbott. I would bring my, my deep guys all the way up to the 25 and just dare Shafter to try and kick it over my head. And run right into it. I see our boss, Dan Green, over on the goal line on the other side. He's catching every last minute of this. Thank who, you, Stan. Who wouldn't? 142 remains. And to that point, he's going to grab it at the 20. And it's going to be Rodgers. Rodgers! Oh, I thought he was going to cut up in that big seam, but he stopped and got swallowed up. Rogers really good there. coverage by the generals. And when you run in on kickoff coverage, you want it to be a net, not a spear. You know, sometimes you get that one guy that just charges hard and overruns the play. But when you're a net, there's nowhere to go. A net catches more fish than a spear does. Love it, coach. So great job by the Shafter generals there, making the drillers earn it here on offense. 94 seven, 94 seconds left in regulation. 31-17, two touchdown lead for the Generals. Chapter looked a little bit confused out here with their coverage. Ryan Iniguez had to step in early tonight. He comes out of the pocket, has a chance, fires one. Oh, really nice pass, but it was dropped. It was a dart. Yeah, they, they went for Isaiah Richard. Ball just a little low. Isaiah's slow getting up. Oh. He looked like he might be cramping a little bit. Looks a little tight. Oh, and he's, he's coming off the field. So that, that limits their options now. Mm, yeah. Now, the other thing I'd look for, if Shaft is playing too loose, throw one of those bubbles out there and let one of your fast guys like Harvey Rogers um, or Bry Bryson Abbott do a little something after the catch with it. Shafter not playing overly loose, though. Austin, way down here, the bottom of your screen. They look at him. Now they throw across the middle. Oh, for just a second, easy had him beat. It was close. A ball delivered right on the numbers there, and I think he scores. Hey, come over here. Another superstar sighting tonight, the one and only, the true legend himself, Noah Palm. Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, bringing all the stars out tonight. Third and 10. Got to chew up some yards on this play right here. Iniguez, any oh. ball is dropped by Abbott. You know what he wanted to do. He wanted yeah. to turn around and go. He wanted to go, go, go. And now all of a sudden. Love the stunt that Shafter uh, ran there defensively. Most of the D-line went left, had one guy looping to the right, and he got pressure in the quarterback's face. We've talked a lot about the Shafter offense, but, boy, this Shafter defense has really held up and made the drillers earn it for the most part. So doom and gloom if you're in the blue. Yeah, this is, it's got to happen now. Fourth and 10. 
Chapter. Abbott is back there with Inigua. Sorry, coach. I was just saying Chapter playing way off right now in a prevent set. Here it is, a quick shot out and another drop pass. Can you believe it? Four passes, four drops. Yeah, so 0 for 4 on that. BJ Vizi right there. That's Carl Jones's little brother. Remember Carl Jones sure do. UCLA? Sure do. Right now. He'd so like to have that one back. Of all things, four drop passes in the last four plays, and that's going to about wrap it up here. We haven't seen it all tonight, but seems improbable now. Yeah, Shafter going into there, taking the offense here. Coach, your thoughts on this historic game, two teams with histories that are unparalleled in so many ways. They finally meet for the first time, and it's the visiting Shafter Generals coming into Griffith Field with a big win. Your thoughts? Well, I think it lived up to the hype. Sure we, did. We saw a great game here, and I'm hoping that they have the rematch next year in Shafter and that they call you and I to cover it. Well, that's a given. <laughs> Coach, thanks for your time. Thanks for your expertise here. Uh, I'm fortunate to spend a lot of great time on the headsets with the likes of you and Rich Cornford and, and Kenny Calvin. And I always consider it a blessing when we get to do it. And tonight, a big, big game here. 31-17, to 17, a big, big win for the Shafter Generals. But the Drillers had moments where they're starting to show the community that they're for real also, Coach. Yeah, they've got a balanced offense. Remember, they lost their quarterback in the first quarter uh, of this game. And so that that certainly played a bit of a role. But, they, you know, they run the ball well. They can throw it decently. And they, they've got some guys on defense, too. So uh, the Drillers are going to be all right this year. And I expect them to compete with Bakersfield Christian for the league title. Well, to the principal, Ben, and Alicia, Melissa, Brian, Shelley, Tamara, Anna, thank you so much for your great hospitality. It's been great to be here tonight. On behalf of Rich Cornford and Julian Wilson, I'm Vance Palm. We hope you enjoyed this great one. It's September. It's football time, and we started this month off with a bang on the Kern High Network. Have a great, great Labor Day weekend. Shafter wins. Good night, and God bless.